I wanna start this video by highlighting this tweet from Defunct who is one of the founders of GitHub. He had his account banned without any explanation and he tweeted about it. This got quite a bit of attention, over 3 million views, tons of likes, tons of comments, and tons of quote tweets. Now this is extremely ironic, obviously, that the founder of GitHub had his own account banned. So what does that really mean for the rest of us? Now, Git itself doesn't have any opinion over where it's hosted. So Git itself is not centralized, but most of the instances where we interact with Git are centralized. So with GitHub, most of the people that I know that are in software kind of depend on it for their livelihood. I have a lot of my work there. A lot of the offers and the opportunities that I've had have come out of my code. People spend years of their life building out their online presence in places like GitHub. And the sad part is when you have a hosted centralized solution that you have no control over, then things like this can happen. Now, someone who is extremely well-connected and well-known like this person can obviously get their account uh, given back to them. But for the average person, this isn't something that you can kind of depend on. So what if there was a solution that offered a very similar API and feature set, but was also censorship resistant? That's what we're gonna be looking at today, and that is Radical. Now today they've released their V1, which is a big improvement over all of the different things that they've offered in the past. And this is what we're gonna be diving into today. We're gonna to look at how to essentially replace Git or add Radical to an existing Git workflow. Now, if you wanna get started with Radical, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to get started, but I'm also gonna point you to a few resources, one of them being this Radical user guide that's gonna walk you through everything that we're doing today. And if we go to this user guide and we kind of go to the introduction of what Radical is, they say that Radical is an open protocol that enables users like you to collaborate on your code within a sovereign network. It's a neutral environment where you have full ownership of your data and you have the autonomy to set the rules of your code universe as you see fit. Now, I think this is really, really great because this is something you can essentially just tack on to your existing workflow and you've added a lot of value without having to do really that much work at all. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go and to an existing code base, we're going to install Radical, we're going to run a node, we're gonna push some code changes up, we're gonna look at how the CLI works, and then I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of resources, and this should be a great getting started guide, and it shouldn't take very long. So with that being said, I'm gonna jump into my terminal and we're gonna start writing some code. So here we are, we're in this existing code base. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up in my text editor. And the only thing we're really going to be updating is going to be this uh, readme. So I'm gonna just put a title of something like Radical Example App, something like that. All right, so what we need to do now is we want the Radical CLI, which we're gonna be using by typing in rad. Right now we don't have it installed. So we're gonna go to this uh, user guide and I'm gonna go down to installation. And we're going to just copy this line here and we're gonna go ahead and install Radical. So after Radical is installed, we should be able to run the rad command and see all of the different options that we have available to us. And the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a rad, uh, rad identity. So I can run rad auth, and this is going to walk us through everything we need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my alias as my first and last name. I'm gonna enter a passphrase. And now we're all set. We have our identity configured and we can now say rad init to initialize a new project. We can say rad clone to clone an existing project. But before we do any of that, what I wanna do is go ahead and run a radical node. And this is going to allow us to easily sync up all the changes that we have to the radical network. So I can just run rad node start this will go ahead and kickstart the node and it will run in the background. Now that the node is running, we can go ahead and initialize a new radical project by running rad init. We can give the project a name, a description, a default branch, and we will set the visibility to public. 
So after we've initialized, it's gonna go ahead and sync our um, new app to the network and it will actually give us a repository that we can then go view on the network. So I'm gonna click there and there you see that we have our app. It's already been published and it's now publicly viewable, very similar to how Git has a nice dashboard and user interface where you have the source code, the issues, you have a way to clone the project either using the Radical CLI or Git. Um, you can copy the link and share it. And you can also kind of give a link to seed the project if someone else wants to do that. Uh, the next thing we might want to do is to push those updates that we made. So if we go back to our project, you'll see that the readme has been changed, but we haven't seen those changes pushed up to rad yet. So what I can run is like get status and we'll say that we we'll see that we have a change there. So I'm gonna go get add and then get commit, updated readme. And now I can just run git push. And this will go ahead and update the project and I can now see the changes here. So we now have the changes synced immediately and we see that we have both commits there. You can also, um, let me go ahead and, and update this and show you another way that you can push. I'm gonna go ahead and change this again, change the readme again. We can also say git remote dash V and we'll see that we have the uh, rad remote. So I can say git push rad origin, I'm sorry, git push rad main. And this will go ahead and push that additional update as well. So that's just another way that you can uh, push updates. Now I have the node running. If I want to turn the node off, I can say rad node stop. This will stop the node. Um, if I want to clone another app, I can go to one of the seeds, like right here, or, or I would say like the seed explorers, and you can kind of see a lot of the different apps that are out there. So I might go to Awesome Radical, which is a resource that I'm gonna share in just a moment, but I might want to clone this. So I can just copy this and then we can go into another directory and then we'll say um, rad node start again. And we'll go ahead and clone this new repo locally. And now we can change into Awesome Radical, which is a clone of that repo we just looked at there. So this just has a bunch of different cool projects. I'm gonna to link to that in the notes. Um, the last thing you might want to do is to just explore what the CLI can do. So you can block certain repositories or nodes. Um, you can configure your uh, like local configuration so you can fork stuff. There's you know quite a bit that you can do. So I would, I would recommend if you want to kind of get comfortable with this, just starting to use it and playing around with a lot of this stuff, you know, that's kind of the best way to learn. The resources I want to kind of point you to are going to definitely be this radical user guide. This is the best place to start. This is gonna walk you through everything we did here and more. There's also a nice VS Code uh, plugin that you can use that allows you to sync your project more easily and do a lot of other stuff. There is also a JetBrains plugin if you're not using um, VS Code. Then I definitely recommend um, Awesome Radical as well. And then also there is there are other guides. Let's see here. Here, so we looked at the user guide. There's also the protocol guide and the Cedar, Cedars guide. So to become very familiar with everything, just go ahead and read up on all this stuff. And then finally, consider just following Radical on social media to keep up with all the updates. So that's it from this. I wanted to make this a very quick, quick and easy overview of how Radical works and how to get started using it. Thanks for checking it out. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks.